Hello Legends. In this video, I'm gonna show you a tool that will let you use any AI model for free for text, image, and video generation. You'll be able to use all your favorite paid models like ChatGPT and Claude, as well as a bunch of other unpaid models that are open source that you probably never heard of before. My favorite thing about this tool is that it can actually run two models head to head. So you just send in one prompt and you can see in real time as they both generate the response which means you can see which one is faster and which one generates the better response for your needs. And if you stick around to the very end, I'll also show you an open source sound effect generator, which you can use to upload these videos that you're generating and then generate some sound effects for them as well. All right, let's get into it. So the tool that we're exploring today is called LM Arena. Uh, the whole purpose of this tool is to collect community feedback and use that to rank AI models. So uh, as a disclaimer, any interactions that you have with this, they are gonna be collected. So just don't share anything that you wouldn't want somewhere out in the internet. Um, and there is no place to sign up. There's, you don't have to pay for anything. So as soon as you go to this link, which I'll leave in the description of this video, you will see exactly what I see right now and you can use it right away. Now, as you can see, the interface is very similar to something like ChatGPT or Claude. You have the text input box here where you can send in your messages. And at the start of this video, I mentioned that there was a side-by-side -side mode where you can run two models and compare the output of both. There's actually three ways to interact with this system. So the battle mode, you uh, input your message, you get a response from two different models that are unknown, you vote for which one was your favorite, and then after you vote, it basically reveals which models were used. Um, that's super cool. The side-by-side, -side, you can actually just choose the models you wanna use. So you can choose, let's say, 4.1 and Gemini 2.5, or you can compare from the same provider, you can go 4.1 and the 4.0. And then finally, you have the direct chat, which is just like the standard interface. You choose your favorite model, and then you have a conversation with that. So let's start by going to the battle and let me input, uh, explain how to make a paper airplane in five steps. So now we have, okay, wow, that's pretty cool. We have two different sets of responses. Um, both were very quick. And let's say I actually wanna go with uh, the left one. So left is better. Um, and like I mentioned before, we're, we're voting and the vote is collected and it's used to actually help rank the, um, with the rankings of the AI models. So now that we voted, we see the favorite response, and that was GPT OSS, which is the latest model um, for actually running on your local operating system. So that's pretty cool. Um, and that was very fast, actually. The 120B was very fast. And then on the right-hand side, we had the Gemini 2.0 flash. So that's actually pretty interesting. Now, if we go for the side-by-side, -side, I ran this before, so I had GPT 4.1, and then I ran it against the 4.0. Let's run the exact same prompt, explain how to make a paper airplane in five steps. Let's run them both. And yeah, what we see is the speed of the 4 row model is actually slightly faster. Um, and yeah, I think that uh, I like the right hand side reply, but I actually like that it's faster and that's my preference. Um, I think the ranking here is a little bit arbitrary uh, from the user's perspective because it's not really ranked on like, there's no like what's faster, what has a more accurate response based on your perception. It's just kind of like which one is better. So I'm gonna choose right is better. All right, cool. So now let's actually just start a new chat. I'm now gonna use the 4.1 and the 2.5 Pro. Let's keep the exact same prompt going and let's see which one is, fa oh, okay, wow. So 4.1 is, it's literally complete by the time the Gemini 2.5 Pro goes in. This just might be an error with how the system is loading. We'll give it another go after it finishes generating. I'm just gonna go left is better. And I might actually just ask a follow-up question, but it's gonna be completely random. Let's send this in and let's see Okay, there you go. So 4.1 is much faster at responding. Uh, pretend you're a pirate explaining how email works. So yeah, 2.5 is, um, yeah, it's actually very, very slow. By the time it spools up, the 4.1 is finished. All right, and it was finally done. So I'm just gonna go left is better because my preference was speed. And now finally, let's go to the direct chat mode. And for this, I'm just gonna use a model that I actually haven't heard of before. So I'm gonna go with command A. And now to explore this bar a little bit further, we have the ability to do web search and generate images. So we'll look at generate images in just a second. For web search, I'm just gonna ask, what is the temperature in Melbourne right now? So we're gonna be using, okay, so this is PPL, so this is perplexity, and we're just searching the web nice, and we have our response. So the current temperature in Melbourne is 14.8 degrees Celsius or 59 degrees Fahrenheit, and actually has a bunch of sources that we can go to and click so that's super, super neat. Now, I just wanna take a second to actually learn a little bit more about what LM Arena is. So LM Arena was actually started in 2023 and it was originally called Chatbot Arena. The sole purpose at that time was uh, to basically create a way to compare models side by side. 
So I think this is actually becoming more and more popular uh, because this tool a month ago is actually slightly different in, uh, in its capabilities. Like I think a month ago, it didn't really have the video generation model that we'll be looking at later in this video. Now, what I really like is the mission and vision. So the mission is to bring the best AI models to everyone and to improve them through real world community evaluations, which is what we were doing before by choosing left was better or right was better. And the vision is to create an open space to try all the best AIs and shape their future through collective feedback. So I just wanna deviate away from this chat interface for a second and go into their blog because this is actually super cool. So let's say we just go into the most recent blog post from the 31st of July, a deep dive into recent arena data. This data set contains 140,000 conversations from the text arena, which if we just quickly go back, the text arena is this interface where we're just typing with text. We're not generating images, we're not generating videos, it's just a text generation. So they've actually aggregated the results of the data set and they've made it publicly accessible. So you can come into here and read through this. Um, one cool thing that I wanna show you, I'm just gonna scroll down a little bit further is, uh, okay, it's this. So topic distribution. This is super interesting because out of 140,000 conversations, the uh, LM Arena has been able to actually model, uh, group all the conversations and model them for us to look at. So, I mean, this is just, at now, it's just pure curiosity. Um, AI use and analysis is one of the biggest buckets. Programming, web development, media and content creation, more programming here. Wellness and lifestyle, that's pretty cool. Math, science and puzzles, creative writing, personal writing. So you can see that, I mean, a lot of the use cases here are, yeah, AI use and analysis. Uh, so probably they're uploading, people are uploading documents and just kind of um, trying to break them down. Uh, programming, web development, content creation, and then some creative writing as well. So professional writing, so like writing applications. Super, super cool. But you can go a level deeper. So let's go to the Arena Explorer. And this contains even more information for us. Um, and I want to bring our attention to, okay, this thing here. So we have this uh, ranking changes across the top 10, uh, across categories for the top 10 models. So we have the top 10 models over here, uh, GPT 4.0, uh, 4.0, 3. Claude 3.5, 4.0 mini. You can, you can read all these models on the side and then the ranking here. So they're ranked against the categories of creative writing, which was one of the you know like two decently sized buckets, uh, puzzles and math, another big bucket, and then tech programming, which was a massive bucket. So if we just remove everything, we can now just see um, a really great comparison of community. This is, now this is again, this is community driven comparison, uh, tech and programming. So they're ranked in order. Chat GPT 4.0 was ranked number one. Um, you might not agree with this. You might agree with this. I don't know. Uh, and then Claw 3.5 was ranked number three. If we get rid of tech programming, puzzles and math. So the best one was Gemini 1.5. Um, and then we have creative writing was 1.5 as well. So I'm not sure that all the latest models are part of this specific graph that we're looking at. Um, I think some of the later models would perform better than what we're seeing listed here. But nevertheless, it's actually very interesting to see based on community interaction, um, the actual data set, like the fact that you're able to interact with it as a individual person. And then all the, um, all the interactions from everyone that's been on here are publicized and they're aggregated into these really easy to interact with um, graphs and interfaces and the information is readily available. So this is super cool. Uh, if you do want to see a deep dive of this, I'm actually going to be diving into this probably later this week and post up a longer, much more boring video in my community. So yeah, quick plug. If you want to join that, please jump into there. Otherwise, let's get back into the video. So now we've just seen the text generation and I'm now going to show us the image generation. So once you click over to image, you now have the ability to generate images. You can still do the battle side by side anonymously, uh, side by side of two models of your choice or direct chat. Let's say we go side by side. Um, now the models that you're interacting with are the image generation model. So previously we didn't actually see, um, I think some of these we may have seen for the, in the previous, um, just text generation, but a lot of these are different because these are just image generation specific. So let's go to flux one context pro and we'll just use uh, GPT image one and let's get an image of a dog in a bow tie. So let's submit this and let's see which model is faster and produces the better result for us. So really cool. We can see the time um, spent generating the image. Okay, awesome. So around 12 seconds in, Flux Context Pro has an image for us. It's pretty interesting. I would say, I probably could have been more descriptive and said make it like hyper realistic or whatever. So the styling, I can't really comment on. Um, but about 12 seconds to generate the Flux image. We're at 30 seconds so far for the GPT 
uh, image as well. Now, what you would have seen in the GPT interface is like that it's like, um, as it's generating the image, it kind of just slides down bit by bit, kind of like back in the day when you had dial up internet, if you were going to web page and upload an image, it would just show like slices of the image at a time. So that's interesting. I think I just missed it. It was like 40, 45 seconds. Um, so maybe uh, four times longer, three to four times longer to, to generate the image with uh, GPT image one. Uh, but overall, both really cool images. Um, the bow tie looks awesome here. I like how you can see the fur really well. Um, same thing here, really, really cool detail. I'm gonna go left is better because flux was much faster and that's what I'm ultimately grading for um, in my personal experience. Now let's keep exploring this interface. So if I click on this button up top, we actually open up the sidebar and we can see um, some more cool things. So the first thing is we have this leaderboard, which I'm gonna go into in a second. We also have all the previous chats we had today. And then we have the, uh, this is how we generate videos. We actually have to go across to Discord, which is a different tool, um, but everything is free. All you need to do is create a Discord account, which once again is free as well. So I'm not gonna bore us by going into the previous chats we've already had. Let's go across to the leaderboard. This is gonna be interesting for us to see. So just like before, when we were in that other interface, we were on the blog and we saw like, the nicely aggregated information. We can interact with all the different graphs. Um, this is the actual leaderboard of the text models. So Gemini 2.5 Pro is leading the uh, text leaderboard. You can see the score is 1459. Very closely behind it is the 03, 1452. Um, and you see all the different votes and the scores as well. For web dev, Gemini 2.5 Pro. Let's go down. Vision 2.5, text to image, image generation 4.0. Uh, let's go a little bit further. Image editing, you have web search. So you can see against all the different use cases, you can see which model is performing the best. And if we keep going down a little bit further, we have the entire arena overview here. So once again, you can just come into here, probably spend a couple of hours going through all this data. It's super interesting. Um, but let's now go across to Discord to try the uh, video generation. And actually when we go to Discord, we're also able to generate images and we're also able to edit existing images. So let's go and check this out. Now, assuming you have a Discord account, uh, then the next screen you see is this accept invite. Just click accept, and then you'll be taken across to the uh, actual image generation space. Now, if you're not used to using Discord, um, this is gonna be a little bit different to that initial interface we were using. There is no uh, private generation of images here or videos here. You actually have to go across to this little panel on the side. Let's say you go across to video arena one. And this is just fully open to absolutely anyone. What a shocking image to start with there. Um, but yeah, all you need to do is you come into here, you ask your, or you submit your prompt for the video or image generation. And then um, it's generated directly back into this chat interface and everyone can see what you generate and you can see what everyone generates. So here's a bunch of different stuff that's being generated. So let me show you how to generate a video you have to do forward slash and you open up the commands that are possible to be used in this window. And I'll just zoom in a little bit. You have the forward slash video to generate a video with LM Marina. You have the forward slash image, which is to generate an image and then image to video where you can submit an image and then prompt up some edits to that image. For now, I'm just gonna be sticking with the video, but you can come into here and play around with these other ones as well. So let's click on forward slash video. And then we see we have this little placeholder created. So we have the forward slash video. It brings up a prompt tag. So all we need to do is write our prompt into this space here. And my prompt is gonna be a gladiator walking into the Colosseum. All right, I'll just hit enter. And now it's gonna take us a little while to generate this prompt. Um, it might take up to 10 minutes and we'll get a notification when it's done. Okay, cool, so our stuff has been generated. Let's click on the first one. And that looks really neat. That looks great, okay, that's awesome. Um, and then yeah, every time you generate a video, it has this little kind of closing uh, tag at the end. But that first one was phenomenal. Let's see how the second one came out. Okay, so that was really cool. Uh, both of them were really good. I actually like that a lot. I'm very surprised. The first one especially I like because it had like all that nice stadium in the background and all the different people there. And then the key difference was that the one on the left-hand side didn't have any sound, but the one on the right-hand side did have some sound. My preference was actually the one on the right side, so I'm just gonna vote for that one. And now I'm just gonna download this video, and now I'm actually gonna show you how to generate some uh, sound effects for this first one using another open source tool. And then I'm gonna take us to this site. This is an open source anything to audio generation. We're gonna be using it to generate some sound effects for that Gladiator uh, clip that we just downloaded. 
So I'm gonna go across to demo and I'm just gonna drag in that video that we just generated. And for my prompt, I'm just gonna say classical music plays as the gladiator walks in. Let's click generate. Okay, cool, so that took about 12 seconds. Now we can just hit play over here and let's see what happens. Nice, that was pretty cool. So I think because it transitions to this end screen, uh, we can see that the audio kind of finishes um, about halfway through the video. So you might actually want to take the video first, cut out the end, and then you would upload it into here to get the uh, sound effects generated. But that's super cool. You can actually then download this as well. And now you can take this clip and then try stitch a couple of clips together and create a mini movie. Now I think you get around 10 free video generations uh, every day or every half day. So if you are using this and you go a little bit crazy when you first come into here, um, yeah, I think you just get a notification if you've gone over the limit and it just says, hey, come back at you know this time to try again. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching to the end and I'll see you in the next one.